All right, hello and welcome to the Chicken Coop Season 4 Week 2. And this week, we are up against uh, this guy, Awesomeness Guy. <laughs> Very interesting team they got here. It's the uh, Electric Terrain Team <coughs> with four Paradox Mons. Uh, so it's going to be a pretty offensive battle, I assume. Because their defensive Pokemon do not have a particularly good matchup against mine, I do not believe. Miltank really, really fears Halucha, which is almost definitely coming because we both have terrain. So they probably wouldn't bring that. It also doesn't match up well against Palafin. Altaria has a terrible matchup against Tapu Lele. It gets absolutely smoked. Plus it's physical, in which case it's a little weaker. It might come uh, physical with Earthquake for Heatran, but, I mean, Heatran doesn't do much to Altaria anyways, so... I don't think that's gonna show up. Uh, it also doesn't match up good against Palafin if I have Ice Punch, which is something I could easily slap on uh, for Iron Leaves, so they'd be threatened for that anyways. Uh, they can bring King Gambit. Uh, they're still threatened by Close Combat and Close Combat. And then Toad Scroll, they're threatened by a little bit, and Tapu Lele Focus Blast, because they cannot Sucker Punch me uh, through Psychic Terrain. So they will have to be very careful, but their path to victory, I believe, is through their overwhelming offense. And I'm going to have to counter that, and I think I've built a, a very good team this week. I'm very happy with the team I've constructed here. So, let's take a look at it. First up is Assault Fest Tapu Lele. Max HP, max defense, and oh boy, this thing is bulky. Like the HP, it might not seem all that big, and it's really not only 344, but 273 defense is nice, and then I'm pretty sure that makes it hit 400 special defense with an assault vest. Let me just assume I'm not assault vest and then do plus one. Oh, it doesn't tell me what it is, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's 400. And yeah, this thing is extremely tanky. Like, let's just look at it. Let's just count against that Tapu Koko, that... That little rat. Yeah, even in Electric Terrain, Thunderbolt is only a 4-hit KO. You know, barring a crit. Well, I can easily 2-hit KO with Psychic or Moonblast or whatever, really. Uh, obviously, and oh yeah, Quagsire for them. Good defensive, unaware mod. I have two, I'm bringing, a, not only, I'm bringing two grass types, and I'm bringing energy ball <clears throat> on Lele, so. Yeah, it simply won't be very good for Quagsire. And if I, if they brought it, it'd probably be water absorbed for Palafin anyways. And even then, that's not gonna do a lot, because you'll see why a little later. Yeah, AV. Psychic Surge, of course, because I'm not running fucking Telepathy. Yeah, it's just four strong moves against the team. Like, I have 130 base special attack. I don't need to invest that much. I'd rather be able to live, like, stupidly strong hits. King Gambit. Yeah, I live in Iron Head from King Gambit. Like, they probably do not expect that at all. Like, I... It's Lele. Oh, I just dodged a Focus Blast? It's Jova. I'm killing him with Iron Head. What do you mean it did 75%? What? What? Yeah, see, it's, it's just too damn good. And like I said, they cannot Sucker Punch because of Psychic Terrain. So they'd have to get rid of Terrain in some way. They'd have to bring it in afterwards, but even if Terrain's gone... I'm not even too hit KO'd by Sucker Punch. That's, of course, with zero allies fainted. Let's see, how many allies does it need? That's only a 31%, so they need three dead allies to have a majority chance to Oko with Iron Head. Well, if I'm at full. That's kind of wild. Even then, three allies fainted? They cannot even two-hit KO me with Sucker Punch, except for this very, very low chance. So yeah, this Alele, I think, is fantastic. Um, it also, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure it lives a Poison Jab, no problem, for Mega Medicham. All I have to do is this, to make it in the Mega form. It's 
it's fine that it's scarfed. I can't, like, none of these even two hit KO. I'm gonna hide, give it poison jab. This is assuming it's Jolly, Mega Metacham. That's why I upped the base attack to 100. Yeah, Poison Jab does basically the same as the um, Iron Head with Zero Allies fainted. Like, that's crazy, and of course I easily kill with an uninvested Moonblast. Like, so they're not gonna run bulky Mega Metacham, that doesn't make sense. Of course you're gonna run the stupidly offensive one. Oh, and I completely stopped Bullet Punch. Like, I kind of invalidate this thing. I wonder if they'll even bring it. It wouldn't be a bad choice, because it does threaten most of the rest of my team. Uh, overall, I don't think it's a, a big deal. Actually, it only really threatens two things, and it's this and this. Uh, you'll see why it doesn't threaten these two in a little bit. But, next up is Halucha with the Electric Seed. That's right, <laughs> I'm, I'm running Halucha with their seed. Which is a bit risky, I would definitely say. But here's my thought process, right? Tapu Koko has a fairly good matchup against this thing. And if they, they probably think, oh, if I bring Tapu Koko, I'll have an answer for Halucha, which is very important to have. And they can also think, like, well, it's a good speed, it can pro it'll outspeed Palafin. So, yeah, they'll probably end up bringing it because on paper it's a very good answer for two of my biggest threats. And it's also not threatened that much by a ditto copying it, which is fairly, fairly nice I'd say, and I would say their team can handle a copy Tapu Koko very well. So it's not a big threat for ditto to copy, unlike something like Iron Bundle though, which could kind of go crazy on them in the late game if I were to bring ditto. But yeah, I'm running Electric Seed, but other than that, you probably also noticed this little move I'm running, known as Dig. And I think we all know what Dig does. But, look at their team. Notice anything interesting? They have one flying type. And it's probably not showing up. So I can honestly just Dig for free. Because what? The way it'll work, right, obviously, if you... If you already know, you already know, but if you don't really understand it... When I dig underground, that next move is just going to go right past me. Their next move, right past me. I, I won't be hit by it unless it's Earthquake. And who the hell is going to Earthquake a Halucha, right? But then, next turn, if I'm still in against that Tapu Koko, it's either getting smacked, or it has to switch out to something like... They don't really have a lot of good ground resist. They'd have to bring out something like Quagsire or Miltank, probably. And even then... I just do like, say, 20% to it with Dig, and then get to absolutely smack it with a close combat or an acrobatics. So either way, I don't think Dig is that bad. Like, I do not think Dig and Fly and moves like those are even that bad. Like, obviously they're worse than Earthquake, because your, your opponent gets time to predict it. But in situations like this, it's honestly kind of great. Because I do need something to hit Tapu Koko, and like I said, the big reason that they would bring Tapu Koko is to counter my Halucha, because they need- it resists both of my stabs, and this is in the usually useless move, so they'd probably scroll right over it, or they'd say, ha, as if they're gonna run Dig. But guess what? I'm fucking running it. And the even better part is, like, if I get this in against Iron Treads or something, or even- Mm. Yeah, I would say against Iron Threads, or maybe even Miltank, I can just get up a Swords Dance. Like, I don't have to worry too much about it. It's not that big of a problem. But especially against Iron Treads, it gives me a good chance to set up an SD. I don't think Iron Treads is very much for me, other than Ice Spinner. And even then, all that would do is just remove their own terrain, so... <sighs> yeah. yeah. This thing will hit hard. Let's go back to Halucha and just check, check the calc against the Tapu Koko. I like the offensive pivot, I think that's good. Yeah, Dig does over half, so it's gonna be fine. Damn, close combat. Unboosted does almost. A, like, it does about a third on average. That's 
really crazy for a resist. I do not have that much attack, even though I'm max attack, it's only hitting 283, because I have to run Jolly to outspeed. Um, what am I outspeeding with this? Oh, I'm outspeeding an unboosted um, Iron Moth. That's right, I'm outrunning Jolly Iron Moth. That's right. Which is fairly important to outspeed. But, yeah, other than that, pretty simple. I just put the rest in defense, so I now hit 303 defense after an electric seed boost, which is very nice that it raises defense. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this is kind of bulky, 297, 303. That's not bad at all. I'd be able to tank a hit no problem from Iron Treads and get a Swords Dance off. But up next is Heatran. Very, very simple set. Choice Scarf, uh, Flash Fire, so I completely wall Iron Moth. I did my research, Iron Moth cannot hit this thing with basically anything, so I'm gonna be all set. Eruption, because it's a fucking Scarf T-Tran, why would I not put Eruption on it? Earth Power for the Iron Moth, and just Iron Moth, really. A flamethrower for if I'm weakened but still want to hit a good fire move. And then stealth rock just to... Like if... If I think they're going to switch out, like if I get this thing in immediately, something stupid like... Spide Ops or King Gambit, I can just set up rocks. Or, um, another good thing for this would be to just set up rocks in the face of a King Gambit who's about to sucker punch me to death. Like if we both switch in at the same time. And assuming they don't have SD. If they don't have SD, then I can just set up rocks easily. If they do, I would have to I would have to flamethrower, otherwise I'd just let them SD on me all day, and that's a bad bad idea. But and then it's enough speed to outspeed iron bundle, um, unboosted. Which I will have to be careful of people uh, boosting past me, but I have something for iron bundle. But yeah. Toad Scroll. Uh, this is one of my things for Iron Bundle. Gachi Berry Toad Scroll. And honestly, I'm thinking this is going to be pretty good, right? Because they've got two things here that are really threatening an Earth. Maybe I'd say three. Now, Mega Metacham just close combat. And... So yeah, we got Mega Metacham. Kind of, if it really wanted to run Ice Punch. Uh, we've got Iron Bundle, of course. It's half ice. We've got an Ice Spinner from Iron Treads, which I would honestly think it would run uh, to try to beat this thing. But, I mean, Mycelium Might kind of sucks, but they're very weak to spikes and toxic spikes on this team. Like, look, grounded can be poisoned. Both. Grounded but absorbs it. Grounded but's immune. Grounded and takes. Grounded takes, grounded takes, grounded takes, grounded takes. Immune to both kinds of spikes and immune to toxic spikes. Like, their defensive, their main two defensive threats against my team, Quagsire and Miltank, are both weak to normal spikes and T spikes. I don't really think they're gonna have anything. Uh, maybe they'd bring Heal Bell on Miltank, but I don't think so. My team doesn't spread a whole lot of status unless I'm running like, slightly abnormal sets, but. Yeah, I guarantee you though, the the big bring or the big reason they bring Mill Tank is because if they don't, they're very threatened by Spectre Air. Although they could just bring King Gambit for it, but then they risk me bringing a substitute set with Will O Wisp on it and just burning King Gambit, and then having one of my other Pokemon deal with it. So really, it's a trade-off. But I think instead of Mill Tank, they'd bring King Gambit. And that is exactly what I want. I want to see King Gambit because I think I can deal with it even if Tapu Lele is dead. Because I've got this, I've got this, I've got to an extent this because it's max HP, max defense, so it'll tank. And I've also got this, and then to an extent the Venusaur. Uh, the Mega, that is. But yeah, then Rapid Spin Earth Power. Well, I thought at one point I took off Toxic Spikes for Giga Drain. Just to hit Iron Bundle. Mm. That's the thing, though. I don't know if I need that, because... 
the only thing on my team that's really threatened by Iron Bundle is Palafin, if Iron Bundle still has like over half, and Halucha if it doesn't have the electric terrain unburdened shit. Hmm. So if I could just bait in Bundle and I'll code immediately. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. Not having Toxic Spike sucks, though. I'm gonna be fully honest, but they do have Iron Moth to absorb it. And King Gambit to be immune to it, and I think both of those are gonna show up. So... It's a trade-off I'm gonna have to be accepting of. Yeah, and then Giga Drain is just nice to restore HP in general. Because then I hit Quagsire, because otherwise I'm walled by Quagsire, which is kind of... kind of a bad thing to be if you're a Grass-type. So yeah, this will make my team even less threatened by Quag. Although if it's Water Absorb, it loses to Halucha, and if it's Unaware, it loses to Palafin, so. Yeah, this is a good set, because I Oko Iron Bundle in return, I'm almost certain. I mean, this shit is not... It's very good, but it's not gonna... It would have to be choice specs, and I don't think I don't think choice specs really threatens me that much. Damn, that doesn't guarantee to Oko. Hmm. Maybe that's why I didn't do it. I don't remember if max defense was specifically for anything. Hmm, this is gonna be a tough choice here now. really put choice specs on Iron Bundle. It feels like a bad idea to me, because if they go a water move, I can immediately go into this, but if they hit me with an ice move that isn't freeze-dry, I can go here or here. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be choice specs. I don't think that's a good play. Heavy duty boots instead. That would make a fair amount of sense to run uh, boots. Yeah, and then Ice Beam only does that much. Alright, that's fine with me. I'm cool with doing a massive chunk to it. Because then I can I, then I can immediately go into Palafin and jet punch it. And speaking of Palafin, I think we're gonna move on to that one next. So very basic Palafin, of course. Flip turn, jet punch, CC, and wave crash. Nothing real special here. Um, except for, I guess, the fact that it's max attack and then max HP. Just as a much bulkier set. Because the way I'm looking at it right now is that I'd rather live an important hit. Like, I'm pretty sure I can live something stupid with this. I might be able to live a close combat Mega Medicham. Hundred attack. Yeah, I do. And it, maybe if it's adamant, I. And if it's adamant, I have a slight advantage in living it. But uh, if you may have noticed, Jet Punch almost guarantee Yoko's. And I'm pretty sure Mega Metacham has the same uh, base defense as well as regular Metacham, though I could do it. Right. Could be 80. 85, but even with... Because it's not going to be invested in either of those, so I don't have to change it. It's like, it does 82.797. Like, this thing is getting absolutely smoked by a jet punch. And god for god forbid it tries to come in on wave crash. That would just... That would be too much. Far too much. Then obviously this thing lives a King Gambit hit, no problem. Five allies fainted. It barely does over half with Sucker Punch. 
and obviously lives kowtow in Ironhead. So yeah, not a big problem unless it has a Swords Dance up. And I mean, it can't even switch into Wave Crash at all, so... I'll be okay. I definitely think I'll be okay. And yeah, I mean, Jet Punch, let's count it against Coco, I assume it does at least 75. Oh, yeah. 76 to 90. Like, that's just, it's stupid how much damage this does. And that's without any Terra, because you can't Terra. So I'm just doing 76.8 to 90.7 with the priority move. And how much, this must be doing like 45 to 50 to bundle. Oh, never mind, only that much. Oh, why does it have so much defense? It's weird. I, I don't know, I assumed it was super frail like normal Delibird. Love me some oatmeal. But uh, yeah, their team's getting smoked by this thing. Iron Tread probably almost gets o code. Oh, if it's the uh, if it's no bulk, it just does get o code. That's kind of hilarious. Big problem is getting it into hero form. But. I mean, honestly, I don't think there's much of a threat to me if I just lead it and then switch out depending on their lead. Because... The Uber Choice specs against... They don't even do it Kaomi with Ice Beam on the Lele. Like, come on, man, this shit's too crazy. This shit's too crazy with the AV. Then I can just Energy Ball or Focus Blast. I'd probably Focus Blast for King Gambit. Or maybe I'd Psychic just to bluff that I don't have it. I'm not really sure. No, no, Focus Blasting on the Switch would give me two chances, though. But yeah. Salt Vest Tapu Lele. Kind of, kind of bonkers. And I don't even have Special Defense Investment, except for the little four. Just to hit 400, so... Yeah. This thing... Kinda goes bonkers against Specs Bundle. So good to know. Good to know. And then finally we have uh, Mega Venusaur. Uh, becomes Thick Fat after I Mega Evolve, which if you look at this team is obviously fantastic. Completely ruins any Ice Spinner attempt. Um, I'm now neutral to Iron Bundle's Ice Bullshit, which is fantastic. Neutral to Iron Moth. Um, yeah, that should be it for moves I resist, or am neutral to after, but those are very important moves that I would not be surprised to see at all. I definitely think they're going to bring Ice Spinner on Treads. I think it's a super good play if you're them, uh, if you're them because I have a Toad Scroll, and I also have a um, Amanda Buzz, and, and I have Halucha. Like, there's so many things you'd want Ice Spinner for, and then if I try to switch on Ice Spinner, you can just Earthquake it and to my Heatran. Like. I just think it's a good play for them to bring that, so I'm going to definitely counterplay that along with their other ice types. I think I have all different items. I do, nice. I like item diversity. Uh, we've got a Leech Protect set. I know um, the guy who runs the league, Woof, was really looking to see a uh, Leech Seed, so there you go. I thought it was pretty good this week. I think it'll do good against their more defensive Pokemon, like Miltank. I can just Leech off that thing and just start Giga Draining it. NASCAR cow, hell yeah. Oh yeah, and they can't toxic me, because I'm... No, oh, if there's Sap Sipper, that does suck a little bit, because then... That's right, shit, they might do that. But, either way, I've got this for Miltank. It probably does a Humongo Chunk. I've obviously got this. Uh, if... Oh, but if they're Sap Sipper, they're not Thick Fat, and so they take Humongous damage from Eruption. I don't need to tell you how much Close Combat's gonna do. I mean, I can set up spikes on that thing probably all day. Yeah, I guess I'm just gonna have to find out. They might not run Sap Sipper on it. They might just bring a Thick Fat instead for Heatran. So, yeah. That's gonna be the team for this week. Team build a little early, so I'm not gonna be battling until Saturday at some point. But, it was a fun team build. Definitely like my sets. Hopefully they all work out. 
I, I feel pretty good about it, though I can definitely see a couple paths to losing. Hopefully I can just keep the hazards away, for the most part. Um, so they don't have a ghost type, right? Yeah, they don't have a ghost type, so as long as I can get the spin off, the hazard goes away. And then I've got some interesting stuff. Uh, if they don't bring electric terrain, uh, that'll definitely hurt me a bit. That'll definitely hurt, although it will give me advantages in other spots, because that means no protos are going to go off without um, wasting an item slot on booster energy. Which I feel like if you have Coco, why would you be using booster energy on anything, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be the team for this week, and I'll just cut to the battle. Hopefully we win. Alright. Sending him the challenge now. Hopefully everything goes according to plan. Just gotta make sure I can get Palafin into hero mode. And that way I can just start punching. So their answers to jam Banded Jet Punch are... On this team, Water Absorb Quagsire. Quagsire can't deal with the Venusaur. So, would be pretty good for me. And with a good luck, have fun, get the battle link. Alright. So. Hmm. Good thing. Okay, they have Coco. They have Treads. And they have Bundle. So no Moth. And... What was the other... No leaves, okay. The, no hazard gain except for rocks on treads, which is nice. I don't have to deal with that, I don't have to deal with Altaria. So yeah, I'm a happy man right now. I could just go immediate Palafin lead. Or I could just go immediate Petran lead, both of those I kind of like. Yeah, I'm just gonna immediately lead Palafin. Because no matter what comes in, I can just switch. calc to this in the pre-game thing, but uh, it's been like four days since I recorded that. <clears throat> Alright, that's, uh, that's fine. Assume they U-turned, correct? Yep, that's fine. Hmm. <laughs> How much is this doing to... Oh, that does fucking nothing. Oh, cool, and they have no switch into Earth power. Yachid! Oh, that did nothing. Okay, they're pretty bulky, I think, right? Oh, yeah, they're very, they're very specially defensive. Okay, cool. Should have set up a spike on them. It's fine. I want a heat train here. See no reason to just not erupt. See how much quag takes. Oh. Goodbye, King Gambit. 
You deserved a good rest. A very good rest. Conf Damn, if you're them, what do you do other than go into... Quag? Yeah, there's nothing. If they go into anything else, I'm just immediately erupting again. And then Quag can't deal with Venusaur very well. Even if they ice punch me before I can activate Thick Fat, it's not it's not gonna do anything to me. Like I said, no reason not to just immediately go into it. They don't have a great answer for Giga Dream. Yeah, they had to go into Medi. Oh, damn, that did a lot. Oh wow, that was actually a roll, a low roll. Okay, well, they're defensive, obviously. Which means that their whole point of existing is to beat Palafin. Which is good, I like that. It means they are vulnerable. I doubt their max speed. I feel like they have to be. Oh no, they could just be AV. It could be max HP, max speed AV, I think. I don't like that play. Do not like that play one bit. Because if Treads comes in, I can just, um, just Earth Power the turn after. And the great thing is, if I can get up an SD with, um, uh, Halucha, I can find out on whether or not this thing is... Water Absorber unaware. I, I, it has to be Water Absorb with my team. The team really confused me, because it is absolutely ruined by Spectrier. Well... Hmm. Not a big deal. I took a little less than I expected, but I'm not invested a lot. What do you do to me? They're a bit of a bulky set. Don't really know what they're gonna do here. Cause I mean, I'm really bulky. Can outspeed Halucha. Why would you have Yawn with Electric Terrain? That doesn't even synergize. Yeah, I just simply, simply don't care for the choice of Yawn. That's literally why I did not run Spore on Toad Scroll. I don't want to timer this guy, but. I know it's a hard decision.
<sighs> yeah, I mean, why would I not take a drain here? What would I do if I were them? Yeah, I'd you turn into iron threads, I think. Maybe I'd sack bundle. Maybe I would. But maybe I wouldn't. Having a spike up would have been nice, but having chip on iron threads is probably better. It's nice, the Achi Berry uh, did come into effect. I was right that they'd bring Ice Spinner. But I do think their Assault Vest, uh, max HP, max speed. Because they were confident they'd outspeed Tapu Lele. Oh. Yes, I got Bundle. That's big. Very important that I took Bundle. I might have to make a sack to Medicham soon. Oh, but they try to high jump kick me on a prediction. Zen headbutted again. Cool. Good job by them to the double there. I was really hoping I could catch. Yeah, is that a high jump kick there? Ah, oh, cool. It's a chance I can two-hit KO Quag with a couple of high rolls. Damn it, I min-rolled again. Greedy motherfucker. You always had to switch to Mega Metachan there. Because now I take a kill. Whether it's a two hit KO on Oko or Shreds, doesn't matter. Neither of them can Oko me in return because I have thick fat. Iron Shreds would need to get like a an uber, like a super duper schmooper fucking crit with Earthquake. They decide Coco is the worst remaining. Not a bad choice. You turning for them seems pointless. If I were them, I'd just... Oh, that's annoying. But, uh, time to bring out my little trump card. EQ should kill if they U-turn you. Or, EP, I mean. I kinda wanna, I kinda wanna leech, actually. No, that's stupid. Yeah. Because I can just do this. Yeah, my Halucha outspeeds both of those. I really want to quickly seed, man. But there's no point. Because I'm literally killing him with this. They just really want that burn chip on me. Which is like, cool, but I could Giga Drain at any time and just stall your roost. Which actually I should do, because on the off chance Mega Medicham... No, no way. That's a hundred and... Like what? Whatever it is, 75 times 1.5, so that's like... 13 base power. Just gonna Giga Drain, fuck it. 
They can waste all eight of their roosts, I don't care. Just gonna make sure I win the game. That was a good roll, I think. It was better than my previous two, that was. Son of a bitch. I really just wanted to use it, man. But whatever, I'll just let them use their last roost here and then kill them. Get a drain into EP. Or maybe I won't, but I can just get a drain here. They can't paralyze me because I'm burnt. And actually, yeah, that uh, killing with just Giga Drain is better. Because I have the most HP I could have. Interesting. See if it's helmet or not. It's not. And doing 16 is hilariously bad. Even if they have Bake Out, that shouldn't do that much to me. Okay, let's see how much this does. If it's 17... 29, not risking a roll here. Doesn't matter now because Palafin Hero kills everything. This set essentially. Oh my god. That is absurd. I'm faster than I know it, so. Dig, bro. I can't believe how little that did. The bullet punch. Uh, I guess it's non stab. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Four nothing. I didn't take any real RNG this time. But yeah, I got to show off both of my sets. I think worked very well, these two. Um, I, I played well. I knew all I had to do was take away Quagsire, and once that was done, I knew I'd won. Uh, the Venusaur worked perfectly. I'm, I'm so happy I brought that. It was fantastic, and I mean, I had thick fat for bundle anyways, but once that, once that bundle was gone, I really had no threats uh, remaining for my win. Because this was the only other thing other than Water Absorb. Miggy over here that was able to take a jet punch. And even then, it couldn't take it very well. But, yeah, once I got the rocks up, just, just for the little bit of added chip, even though they all resisted it, just forcing them to take a little bit of chip every time you switch in was nice. And it just, it gave uh, Heatran a chance of two hit KOing. But obviously, Heatran was too busy getting the worst possible rolls. Uh, so it didn't do that, but it's fine. Pretty good match. I GG to my opponent. Next week we are up against Andre of the Real Marie. 
Uh, finally, uh, going up against somebody with a team name. And yeah, that is a threatening team they have. I'm certain. <laughs> I'm most certainly going to have my hands full up against that. See ya, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.